We knew it was going to happen. Inventory, it jumped this week to be right around the levels we came in with Memorial Day weekend. But there were still not enough houses that were available to home buyers. So we're going to talk about that in this video. We're also going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're going to do that interest rate update. And Elon Musk, well, you're mostly wrong, mm. sir. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed down to the Cape. Look at a seven bedroom estate in Falmouth. This place is awesome. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. Should you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then if so, I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods and while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. We knew it was going to happen because it's a trend. And just like we know housing values are about to peak for the year and then start pulling back in the fall, the trend of inventory bouncing back happened this week. But it wasn't enough. I just heard from an offer situation. There were 13 offers on this property. My buyers, we went $122,000 over asking price and still didn't get it. What I find interesting is that we haven't really seen this pricing craziness in our monthly data. I'm working on that video now and should have it out within the next week, but I really thought prices would have jumped more from a year over year perspective. The only conclusion that I have is that, well, we're losing some of the higher end sales of the market, which pushes down that average sale price or that the craziness of last year is the same of this year and therefore they're just canceling one another out but now let's jump into the single family market we currently have 3,799 single family homes on the market now inventory shot up this week which again we knew it was gonna happen this week's inventory gains just made up for last week's inventory pullback for the holiday. Like I said last week, there was nothing to fear or read into. Compared to inventory levels 28 days ago, we now have an additional 14% more houses on the market. That's great news for home buyers, and it's following the spring inventory build that we see every year. We should continue to see inventory build for the next eh, month or so. Now, the big mover was in the number of fewer houses on the market compared to this week last year. I was a little shocked by this number as we now have 592 fewer homes on the market today than we did last year. That's a lot, more than 10% less than the total amount of houses that we currently have on the market. We had 1,382 single family homes come on the market this week. Now this was a great boost in activity, which could have been surmised last week. Our four week rolling average is 1,077 units, but that data is kind of skewed due to the drop during Memorial Day weekend. When compared to the same week in 2022, we had 27.5% less houses come on the market when 1,905 units came on the market. Now, 1,905 units. That's a big number, but 1,382 units, that's no slouch either. We'd actually have to go back to July 11th of 2023 in order to find a week where we had more houses come on the market. Under agreements, they were a little weaker, but this makes sense because of the holiday. But I was still surprised at a number which I considered pretty big. There were 968 homes that went under agreement this week. Now, this is compared to 11,000, or excuse me, this is compared to 1,151 during the same week last year, meaning that pendings were down by only 15.9%. So new listings were off by 27.5%, and under agreements were down by only 15.9% when compared to last year's numbers. Let's see if this imbalance shakes out a little bit next week will be interesting to see now there were 913 homes that closed last week for an average sales price of eight hundred eight thousand dollars and that median sales price of six hundred and thirty five thousand dollars then that months of inventory this is how we compare of how good of a market it is right zero to five months is considered a seller's market but the closer we get to zero the stronger the seller's market that it is this week months of inventory increased to 1.88 months and this is compared to last week's 1.71 months this continues to be a strong seller's market real quick Here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now on to the condo market. We had 2,322 condos on the market as of Monday. Just like the single family market, inventory shot up to the levels equivalent of the week before Memorial Day weekend. Now remember how last week we had five more condos on the market than we did the same week last year? Well, this week that number, it normalized if you will. And now we have 113 fewer condos currently on the market and available for home buyers to look at compared to the same week last year. This news, well, it sucks if you're currently a buyer looking for a condo. 
there are 665 condos that came on the market. Now, the four-week rolling average is 494 units, so we were right above that number. But just like the single-family data, Memorial Day plays some tricks on the comparison metric. But how about this one for some crazy? We were only 18.7% off of newly listed inventory when compared to the same week in 2022 when 728 condos came on the market. That was crazy, and for more crazy, we'd have to go back to this week last year in order to find a week where we saw more condos come on the market. And then there was some even more crazy in the numbers for under agreements. We had 422 condos go under agreement this week. The four week rolling average is 486 units. So we were off that average. But remember, Memorial Day weekend creates a dynamic for lower under agreements. But when we compare this week to the same week last year, we actually sold more condos than we did last year. You heard that right. We had 3.7% more sales activity in the condo market than we did in 2022 when 407 condos went under agreement. I didn't see that one coming. So inventory was down by 8.7% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were up by 3.7%. There were 483 condos that sold last week for an average sales price of $688,000, then that median sales price of $567,000. Then that months of inventory, that actually jumped to 2.3 months compared to last week's 2.15 months. Interest rates. It's been a good week to be a buyer. Interest rates have gone down by a quarter of a point in the last week. This is some very welcome news to home buyers and have decreased the one month interest rate hike that we've been seeing by about four tenths of a point. Now, this is real money and a real savings uh, for home buyers in the housing market. But now let's talk about how Elon Musk is wrong. I think it's important to say that, well, Elon Musk is a very smart man. He's built a wealth that quite literally nobody in this world can comprehend. My yearly take home is, well, just a rounding error on what is most likely his monthly expense report. But nonetheless, that man could still be wrong, and he was. Musk tweeted, commercial real estate is melting down fast. Home values next. He must watch my videos because it is true. Commercial real estate is in a world of hurt. You have a change in the way we do business and thereby want companies the bill from COVID is now just coming due in that commercial real estate market. But the big issue, as we have said in the past, is the evaporation of banks being able to lend to commercial projects. More than 70% of financing for commercial properties came from regional banks, the same banks that don't have the appetite or really the ability to lend our commercial properties. Then sprinkle in a mass refinancing wave and it spells the final nail in the commercial coffin. So that is where he is right. He's wrong about residential real estate. Real estate is local, so there's always going to be some areas that are negatively impacted by the world's events, but the commercial market and the residential market are not correlated. Residential doesn't have the surplus of inventory that commercial does. We have a severe shortage. There aren't fewer people in this country. The population, it continues to grow while we underbuild to meet that demand. And that underbuilding has been going on for nearly 10 years. But what about the liquidity in the marketplace? Well, liquidity in the residential market is pretty much backed by the United States government with nearly 80% of all mortgage loans being backed by government entities. And to the affordability argument, I did a video on this as to why this is not true. You can see it here. Utilizing data starting in 1972, the affordability of houses is a little over average. Elon, you're wrong. Much respect for the rockets that you build, because those things are pretty awesome. And now under the luxury home of the week, which is a seven bedroom estate in Falmouth. Now this is a seven bedroom, five full and three half bath home that spans 12,390 square feet while being nestled on over four waterfront acres. They build this house as one of the Cape's most significant waterfront estates, and I can see that. It is set on an elevated peninsula that overlooks the harbor and Buzzards Bay. This impressive home is a sight to see with gamble roofs, elegant turrets, and expansive covered porches. Inside, you're going to find attention to detail and high craftsmanship throughout in each expansive room. You'll also love the oversized windows that help take every advantage of the world-class views. The house is a deep water dock plus an additional three-bedroom carriage house that provides quarters for the guests that will never want to leave. I know that I I wouldn't want to leave unless I was leaving to jump on my boat and go fishing, but in that case, I'd be right back with dinner. Now, this opportunity is being marketed with an asking price of $14,950,000. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week, well, for fun, but my specialty and my love is helping the normal guy, not the gal buying a $14 million waterfront estate. And when it comes to helping people sell, my goal is to provide that same service that those $14 million mansion folks are getting, but for us non-$88,000 per year property taxpayer folks. 
every person's home, well, that's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. My information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your you know, name and your contact information, and then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever way is easiest and works best for you. I love to talk about real estate, so whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals, questions, or comments about any of this market data. Drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.